Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's really nice to see you guys here again. If you are newer here, my name is Dave and I absolutely love my Galaxy Tab S9 Ultra for a wide array of different reasons. This basically does everything that I personally want and need out of a tablet. The screen is excellent, the processor, the software, the S Pen, uh, Samsung Dex on this was fantastic. The multitasking, this really did check off basically every single box I think that like most people on a day-to-day -day basis would absolutely need and nothing is perfect right so this did have a couple of shortcomings that I discussed in those previous review videos but as a whole this is an excellent device now here we are with the Galaxy Tab S10 Ultra which at a glance you probably wouldn't be able to tell in a lot of different ways that this is a brand new device and so my job here today is to really break down the differences between the S10 and the S9 and all of the different ways that those differences might have a practical implication on your usage in your day-to-day -day life so if you guys are new here my name is Dave and this is where tech meets lifestyle. So right off the bat cosmetically if I'm being honest these basically both just look like the S9 I'm holding this upside down like the S9 Ultra um, the only real difference that you're getting is that the S10 is slightly slimmer and weighs slightly less but in hand if I'm being completely honest if you were to blindfold someone and give them both of these they probably would not be able to tell And basically the entire build you're getting that same aluminum frame speaker placement is the same camera placement is the same the cameras are exactly the same and the s pen goes in the same exact spot this cutout is exactly the same not that that needs to change but functionally and practically works really well and you're getting the same exact dimensions you're getting the same exact battery size charging speed ram and storage options and so you're getting the same dimensions really throughout including the screen so as far as the anti-reflective coating goes i kind of wanted to give you guys a look for yourself seeing is believing and here the difference is really obvious you can see that the s10 ultra has a bit more contrast you can see my reflection right here actually on the side in the s9 when you're getting no such effect over here on the s10 that anti-reflective coating that you're getting on the s10 does make a really nice difference and i can say that using them outdoors i have noticed that that does make a difference i don't know if that's a deal breaker necessarily for why you should pick up the s10 solely over the s9 but it definitely is a really nice plus screen here is just as crisp detailed the colors are fantastic on here and in terms of actual usage for multitasking which is one of my personal reasons that i love the galaxy tab series right where you can have three different windows at one time this covers all of those bases just as well as the previous one and i'm always talking about like practical real life use case when talking about tech because just the spec sheets don't really cut it and so an example that i've given before is that my fiance and i are currently looking for homes and we're also planning for a wedding and so having the flexibility on here for example to say have um, a wedding venue in one of those split windows and having like an excel spreadsheet for numbers and having like a google docs open to jot down notes for those different venues or for different homes that we're looking at is a level of flexibility that you're not really getting on say like an ipad or even an ipad pro where those do have split screen multitasking you do have the stage manager which kind of approximates that but you're not really getting the full benefit of the entire screen real estate because of the way that they crop and so this really for me in terms of multitasking is just the full package and i would absolutely recommend this to anyone who's looking for that kind of flexibility out of their tablet now if you are new here a little bit of context typically i do side with galaxy devices on like the phone end of things but i'm someone that does have a macbook pro that does everything for me here on the channel as it pertains to youtube and editing and all that stuff and for a long time i used my ipad pro as my dedicated work machine getting me through graduate school and in the early phases of the channel for like video editing and stuff like that uh, after a while i just really was not cutting it anymore but having used a lot of like the newer ipads something i can see is that even though i do prefer the galaxy tab ultra tablets more than ipads for basically everything else the one thing that ipads really just have down is more of like the video editing and the higher end like pro style apps those are things that you're just really not quite getting a full cohesive experience with on these tablets now that being said this is not using a newer snapdragon processor like a lot of the galaxy phones and a lot of the previous galaxy tablets have been using for the past couple of years this is actually using mediatek's 9300 plus chipset which actually is going to have better gpu cpu performance and rates better in a lot of different benchmarks and so what piqued my interest is how this actually handles having like big video files in the timeline how it works for video exporting and what i found is that for the storage transfer you're getting about the same speed and when it came to actually exporting the same exact files in 4k 24 fps with some video effects and cap cut this is actually coming in at around i think like 24 seconds faster of exporting time than on the previous snapdragon and that's something that uh, 
it's not like a massive difference. Again, you're looking at like 24 seconds worth of difference. But something that I did notice is that the way that it actually handled the timeline with the effects, this handled those things a bit more smooth with fewer dropped frames across the actual editing and importing process than on the S9 Ultra. Do I think that it is quite as heavy hitting as say like the M2, M3, iPad Pros, right? In terms of if you want like a dedicated editing machine for a lot of very heavy video editing, like on my Sony a7 IV camera, like 4K, 24 FPS, 10 bit, shooting 422, are really big heavy files. The iPads tend to handle those things a bit better, but if you are looking for that and you prefer the Galaxy Tab experience, this does handle better than last year's model. And if you've made it this far in the video, drop a hashtag eggplant emoji for me down in the comment section down below alongside a word, phrase, or quote that you'd like me to say in the next video. So if you guys know me, I'm big on health and fitness. I'm always trying to make sure that my body's in as peak physical condition as possible. But on top of not only like my normal work as a therapist, and also with this YouTube thing, which is a business entity for me, actually being able to find the time to sit down and make healthy meals that are protein packed and are going to give me the nutrients that I actually need is really difficult. And that's where Factor comes in and actually giving me a large variety of very protein packed, nutrition dense meals that lets you skip the time going to grocery stores, prep work, actual cooking fatigue, and you're actually getting chef crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right right to your door with over 35 meals to choose from per week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan, veggie. These are not delivered frozen, they're delivered chilled. And so if you need to, you can heat it up in two minutes and then you have a delicious chef made meal with lots of protein and nutrition that's actually going to meet your needs. And for something a bit more gourmet, they actually do have gourmet options like this filet mignon here, shrimp, broccolini, asparagus. Go ahead to factor75.com or use the links that I have down below for you guys and use code DAVIDVELEZ50 for 50% off of your first box and 20% off of your next month of orders. Again, that's factor75.com. Use code DAVIDVILLES50 for 50% off of your first box and 20% off of your next month of orders. So this is a smaller thing, but the haptics in the S9 Ultra were ones that I really was not a fan of. The motor is kind of placed a bit more up here. And so when you're using it wide, you kind of feel like a mushy vibration just kind of off to one side. And when you're over here, it still feels kind of weird because the motor is farther away from your hand. And for me personally, I wasn't a big fan of that experience. Super small thing, not a deal breaker. The rest of this is absolutely great. What I have noticed though, is that the motor on the S10 Ultra feels like it's more centralized in the body. And so because of that, when I'm using a widescreen, the motor feels better because it's closer to my hand. And additionally, when I'm using it this way in like the, uh, the longer orientation, because it's not so far away from my hand, even here, it feels better. What I have noticed though, is that on the S9 Ultra, the motor itself feels a little bit stronger, maybe where the motor on here feels maybe not as like high and strong, but it feels more natural. And it just kind of like feels better in the hand when you're doing various tasks. Super small thing, not a deal breaker. But I know some of you guys mentioned not liking the motor in my previous videos. And so if you want a better motor, this one definitely has it. Which takes me to the next thing that you would really want like a strong chipset for, which is the games. Last year's S9 Ultra was able to handle everything at max everything basically i mean i could play every single game with, like maximum resolution settings maximum frame rates maximum graphical effects like bloom and aliasing and all of those things and i could definitely say the same is true here and so if you're looking specifically for just the gaming upgrade this is going to give you a bit better overhead if you're playing something like genshin impact a lot of things are happening on screen or like zenless zone zero but if you're looking for specifically just for gaming last year's model if i'm being completely honest was a powerhouse as well in that department so you don't necessarily need the s10 ultra to do those things. So those are like the practical real life things that I've personally noticed using both of these side by side, comparing them for you guys. Um, there are of course going to be things that I miss because I'm human. So if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. The whole, the S10 Ultra is really a lot of the same of what we loved about the S9 Ultra. The new MediaTek processor is actually impressive in a couple of different ways, but I don't know if it's going to be like a true game changer for the large majority of people. If you're coming from like a really old Galaxy Tab and you want the best of the best, of course the S10 Ultra would be the way to go. 
But for a lot of bang for buck and a lot of the things that people probably are going to practically use the Galaxy Tab for on a day-to-day -day basis, the S9 Ultra is going to see a lot of sales and it's still a powerhouse tablet that, again, does like everything that it does pretty exceptionally, but that vibration motor is definitely better on the S10. But thank you guys so much again for stopping by and hanging out. I wish you a fantastic remainder of your day, afternoon, or night, depending on the time it is you are watching this. And as always, peace, love. Oh, wait. And as always, <laughs> peace, love. Adios, bye guys, and have a great day.